painting is a great way to embellish several types of projects. However, it can be a bit tedious. I'll show you how to make a super fun pillow using a process known as faux applique. Essentially, faux applique is uh, where you take the decorative stitches on your machine and use them to outline the design that you have on a piece of fabric. Now, you can use a variety of different types of fabrics for this. Uh, you can always get um, a panel from the store and just do the outlines or the design that you find there that you enjoy. Small or large panels will work well, just depending on what size of uh, project you want to do. You can get large scale prints where you, um, you would just outline a few or every single one if you were very ambitious of the print on the, the fabric and then that would look great as well. You can also make your own fabric if you wanted to have something completely and totally unique. Now there are several different ways of making your own fabric. Uh, you can purchase printable fabric that you just put through your machine or your printing machine at home and it'll print out at about eight and a half by 11 and it will display anything you want to print on fabric. You can also um, use photo transfer medium which is a a pretty new product where you apply a very chemically sort of glue to a picture that you print on regular paper and let it dry for 24 hours and you peel off the paper backing and that will create any image you want on fabric and it can go on any lightness or darkness of fabric. So if you had a really, if you wanted to make it on black fabric, the photo transfer medium would be a great way to do that. You can also just make up a design that you like or visit a fabric printing website such as Spoonflower and print out a fabric that you enjoy. They will do the printing for you. They will make it as large as you want, which is nice because if you're making a really large project, you might need a panel that's as wide as a yard or even bigger. So that, that's the advantage there. The technique I chose to use for this pillow was the freezer paper technique. Um, essentially what you do here is you iron freezer paper to the back of a lightweight fabric such as muslin and you run it through your printing machine at home. So your printer should have a manual feed function to be able to do this. If The only limitation here is that you're limited by the size of paper you can th put through your printer. So my pillow form was 12 by 16 and I decided to use a tabloid sized piece of paper which is 11 by 17 and I actually took it to a print shop down the street to print it out just because my printer at home only likes to do 8.5 by 11. But once you print that out you just want to heat set it with an iron and no steam. So once you've picked out the type of fabric you want to use. Um, I recommend making a stitch glossary of all the different decorative stitches on your machine. The nice thing here is that you'll see exactly how the machine creates the stitch as you create your stitch glossary. And because zigzag stitches to create a satin stitch is so important in this design for me, um, I was able to practice the length and the width of the stitch that I wanted to use so that I could decide exactly what would be the best for this pillow. So. Knowing what stitches you have is very invaluable. <clears throat> Once I finished my stitch glossary, I went ahead and started practicing just on a spare panel that I had. And I practiced on this side without any form of stabilizer. And as you can see, it puckers quite a bit. So you're going to want to use stabilizer on the back side of your fabric. Now I went ahead and added um, batting to the other side of the fabric and you'll see that it puffs up very nicely and gives it a textural element to it that you wouldn't really get if you just use stabilizer. That would make it very flat. So once I practiced, I kind of knew how each stitch would look on individual items on my fabric and I was, I was ready to start planning out how I would make my design work for me. So what I did is I printed out my image exactly the same size that it was going to be on my pillow and I took some markers and I wrote across the top the different colors of thread that I had and then the corresponding marker that I used to color code that. I went through and I marked stitches. Um, here I was going to use 19 and here I was going to use stitch number 24 and I just did that so that I would have a reference when I was sewing my pillow. You of course don't have to do this. I like to plan ahead though so that's why I did that. So once you have your um, fabric printed or your print panel ready to go, 
you need to prepare your fabric for this. So I added a bit of batting to the back. I used cotton batting. Um, polyester batting is gonna, especially a high loft, is gonna kind of fluff off a lot into your machine and give you a little bit too much lint or dander as you're working. That can kind of gum up the works in there. So I don't necessarily recommend that. Um, but so I put this cotton batting on the back and as you can see, I just stitched it on along the lines of my outer um, strips here. The way you decide what size you need to make your, the front of your pillow is you base it off of your pillow form. Now my pillow form was 12 by 16, so I added an inch to each measurement. Um, so this is 13 by 17. The reason you add those inches is for seam allowances, so now I have half inch seam allowances on both the width and the height. So, um, I'm ready to start stitching. I know according to my uh, printout that I made that I want to outline this hotel sign on my machine here. So I tuned it up to the correct stitch and I got ready to go. Now here I'm going to reference my chart again. I'm using stitch seven and I want to see that the straight line of this is going to be performed on the left side of my presser foot. So you just put your fabric into the machine carefully. And I like to roll over the side so that it's easier to maneuver as I work. You just line it up carefully here. And now if you were just appliquing this on your own, it would be important to, if you're hand appliquing, it would be important to tie off your thread. Um, with my machine, I can hit back stitch and it'll put a few stitches in place for me, which helps secure the beginning of the stitch. And I recommend doing that. If your machine just starts going backwards and doing the stitch backwards, that might be a little um, hazardous. So if that's the case, I'll show you how to tie those off in just a moment. So I have my needle in and I slowly start to stitch it out. And then I let it back stitch for a few. And we just go around the machines, the sign of the hotel. And you can go as slow or as fast as you are comfortable. It just depends on what you're stitching and exactly when you're doing it. It's important to pay attention to how the stitch is made so that you can turn the corner and you won't get extra stitches just kind of randomly appearing on your fabric in an area that you don't want it to appear on. So we'll just go across here. And we'll turn this way and roll the edge up for us. Now I'm using just um, all-purpose polyester thread in my bobbin, or you could use bobbin thread down there, whichever you prefer. You just want to make sure it's the same weight as the thread that you're using on the top. Otherwise, um, it can start to cause some puckers and some issues as you sew. And you will need a variety of colors of thread for this project, so it's a pretty fun reason to go stock up on thread. Okay. And you're just going to kind of use the presser foot and the needle to pivot as you go, which is a fine way to do it. And just depending on how comfortable you are with your machine, you can move along at any rate that you want to go. Okay, pivot one more time, and I'm almost done. Okay, and I let it backstitch a few stitches there. Raise my needle. And clip the threads a little bit long because you're going to pull them to the back side with a hand needle. Let's see here. So to finish it off, you want to just put your hand needle into the material um, one stitch away from the last stitch that your machine did. And Put the threads through the needle and straight to the back side. 
Mm. And you know how threads like to be on me sometimes. There we are. <laughs> And it'll pull it back. And back here you have the option of either tying them off or, well, I recommend definitely tying them off a little bit. Um, you can also just use a bit of stabilizer to, um, to seal the stitches in, which once you finish all your stitches, you are going to want to put some stabilizer on the back here. So once you've finished all your stitches, um, you need to move on to creating the back flaps for your pillow. Your back flaps are essentially, they need to be as large as your pillow is on the front side. So our front, my front panel was 13 by 17. So I take 13 by 17 and I want to have two inches of overlap for the flap, the envelope closure to overlap one another. So that's going to add four additional inches. So we go from 17 to 21. And then I folded this over. Um, Let's see, I fold this over twice at a half inch each. So that's an additional inch per back flap. So that gives you two more inches, which pushes you, puts you at 23. Divide that in half and you have 11 and a half. So that's how you make your back flap measurements. So you need to add four inches for overlap and two inches to fold over the pieces. And so you have 11 and a half by 13 inch pieces. And once you get those, you want to just iron over first a half, one half inch, and then an additional half inch to kind of seal that seam there. And you just sew those down and you'll have two nice back flaps with, um, two, I did two rows of stitching just to extra secure that um, fold over there. Now, the side that has the fold on it is going to be the wrong side of the fabric. So this is the right side here. This is the side that will face out on the back of our pillow when we are finished, and they will overlap about by two inches like so. Okay, so I finished all my stitches, and as you can see, they're all in place, and it looks very pretty. I'm, ve I'm ready to finish up my pillow. You wanna go ahead and seal those stitches now you've pulled them through as I showed you and tied them off. However, you can also add an extra level of security with a level, a layer of stabilizer. I just used medium weight iron-on stabilizer. I just ironed that right to the back there and that's going to seal all my stitches in, which is very nice. And I, I added pom-pom trim because that makes my pillow even more fun. You want to base that in place about a quarter inch from the edge of the pillow so that when you sew your half inch seam allowance it um, tucks all of this blue trim along here in and you don't see that in the final product. So now I'm ready to go. It's, it's important to pin these on. So remember this side that has the fold on it is the wrong side so I'm placing right sides together like so. And these pom-poms can be a bit of a nuisance to sew. When you're pinning, you need to pin every three or four pom-poms just to have everything work out well for you. They can pull the fabric and they can be a pain. You can use a piping foot to assemble them uh, or to sew them on. However, I like to have a larger presser foot on my sewing machine because it tends to manhandle those pom-poms as necessary and push them out of the way as it sews along. So I'm just pinning every two or three pom-poms along as I go. And once you have everything pinned in place, you will just stitch around the edge a half inch with a half inch seam allowance. And um, you wanna make sure that you back stitch where you have your closures just because that's where you're gonna get the most wear and tear on your pillow. So back stitch two or three times right where this folded edge meets the pillow and then you'll feel it when you go over it here where this uh, other folded edge of the, your back flap meets the pillow. So you stitch around. When you get to the corners, instead of stitching straight and pivoting, it's a good idea to stitch up to the corner and then do one or two diagonal stitches right at the corner. That'll help give you a more crisp corner look. So once you have that all pinned in place and you've sewn it around, you just turn it right side out and put your pillow form in and you have your pillow all ready to go. 
The nice thing about faux applique is that you don't have to worry about turning the edges. This is a fun technique you could use to do any number of things. You could put um, a child's drawing onto fabric and keep a memento forever. You could put a wedding photo or any photo from any special occasion on and do the design lines of the photo and just decorate them with your stitches. This is one type of gift you can make that is truly unique or you can just make it for your own home if you want to keep it. So that's why I think faux applique is a little bit more fun than actual applique and I recommend using it whenever you get a chance.